Welcome back to the Athletic Baseball Show for Monday, October 2nd. This is On Deck. I'm Stephen Nesbitt, and I'm joined by Levi Weaver. Levi, the postseason is upon us. We've made it. Today is our, uh, I, I suppose, it's kind of our wild card warm-up here. We're leading the way for a larger preview from uh, Jason Stark and Doug Glanville on Starkville, but there's still a lot for us to get to. Levi, how was your weekend? Absolutely. Uh, I played baseball this weekend. Uh, my knee has decided that it does not want to function anymore, so I'm hobbling around the... Uh, hobbling around the house um but other than that good good fun weekend of playing baseball watching baseball just leaning into the life here at this point wearing wearing baseball caps every day that's that's what i do now i love it i love it yeah. um well you played baseball and so did uh, 30 other teams in major league baseball yeah. uh this weekend and that determined i mean had to determine uh the 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 playoff field and, and we have it it is set there was some wildness that extended all the way into sunday um, afternoon when the Houston Astros were able to clinch against not all odds but pretty heavy odds clinch the the AL West at the very very, very end of the season they got to the tape first yeah. um, ahead of the Rangers who will touch on their series with with the uh, Mariners before we get on to our favorite playoff um, our favorite wildcard series we'll pick one apiece um, but hey let me lay out the bracket here in the American League the Rangers against the Rays in St. Pete with a winner to face the number one seed the Baltimore Orioles in the second American League wild card, the Twins against the Jays in Minnesota. Um, and that one is going to be the winner to face the Astros, who escaped with the second best record and the wild card by in the American League. And we're going to face the question can the Twins finally end their 18 game playoff losing streak? We'll see. In the National League, the Diamondbacks against the Brewers in Milwaukee with a winner to face the Dodgers in the NLDS. And then in what we're calling the uh, the NL East corner of the bracket, we have the Marlins against the Phillies with a winner to face the Braves, the number one team in all baseball at this point. So stacking up to be a pretty good playoff, Levi. Yeah, the, the Twins, as you mentioned, uh, a pretty long stretch of playoff uh, bad luck. They have not won a playoff series since, unless my research is failing me, uh, 2002 when they defeated the A's in the ALDS to advance to the ALCS, which they lost. Um, yeah. That's going to be an interesting one. I uh, looking at this AL side of the bracket. You know, the, the Astros get the second best record and get a bye. They actually had the exact same record as the Texas Rangers, who do not even get the home field advantage playing the Rays. I know uh, because they they are uh, that's that's how baseball go. So the um, the Rangers did sort of cough up an opportunity this week. They lost yeah. three out of four to the Mariners. Uh, all they had to do was win one of those three that they lost, and they would have been the AL West division champions. They lost one to nothing uh, on Sunday, and that one run scored. <sighs> I'm kind of a bonehead play. The bases were loaded. The ball, it's a soft uh, ground ball to Nate Lowe. Nathaniel Lowe picks up the ball. Now, if he had just thrown it home, it would have been there in time for the force out at home plate, but he didn't. He touched first base first, get, got the out there then threw it home well the throw was not there in time to get the tag it was a tag play at that point and uh and therefore the run scored rangers lose one nothing and they are now a wild card team but i i love all of these matchups i'm hoping maybe for an underdog i'd like to see the brewers maybe make it to the world series in the national yeah. league i think that'd be fun um yeah in the AL. to touch on to okay. touch on quickly the um to touch on quickly the big big sort of losers in all this uh i think thankfully for all of us we had we did have some competition going down at the end but somebody's gonna be left out of the dance and the mariners are that team in the american league heartbreaking uh they finished one game out uh, they lost um six to one in the penultimate game of the season <clears throat> needed to sweep the rangers went three or four to simply i guess spoil the rangers uh wild card by situation there ultimately that last 10 game stretch of the season against Houston and two series against uh, the Rangers. The the Mariners went four and six and needed needed one more W. And so just and not quite enough there. Tough break. Tough break for a team that that just felt like it was destined to for something to work out here in the second half of the season. Mm -hmm. um, on the NL, more teams involved, but kind of on heading different trajectories. The Cubs went seven fifteen after September seventh, and they did it to themselves here. Um, they. Yeah. They just just couldn't couldn't get across the finish line. The Reds kind of played 500 ball on the stretch. They were two games out. The Cubs were one game out. Also two games out. The Padres. After all mm -hmm. that, after all that, the Padres that won their last six series of the season. They went 15 and three after September um, 10th, I believe it was. But that's just how much of a hole they put themselves in. So I guess congrats on the 
a winning season. Yeah. Yeah, they made their way back. Um, and weirdly, like, we haven't thought about this team as a playoff team in quite some time, but also the Mets, who were eliminated long, long ago, ended up much closer to the bottom than the top. But who would have thought, you know, eight, nine, eight, nine months ago that we wouldn't even talk about the Mets and has been close to the playoffs this year? That was a colossal, uh, just garbage fire that happened there uh news came out of uh of queen's day that buck show walter by the way is not going to be returning in 2024 so we'll see who david stearns and company bring in um to to manage that that squad yeah. next year yeah buck gabe kapler out in san francisco uh tito francona retiring in cleveland am i missing any i think there's three openings at this point but um so far yeah so far, there's always going to be one that trickles out uh, later on. Mm -hmm. But hey, Levi, let's get to uh, we each picked our, our, our favorite series of these four to spotlight. And uh, wh which one you go with? Uh, I'm going to go with the one that I know the most about, obviously, is the Rangers and, and the Rays. A uh, little note from history. The Texas Rangers made the playoffs in 1996, 98 and 99. They opened against the Yankees all three times and lost all of those series in 2012 they had the wild card game game versus baltimore lost that 2015 and 16 they opened the playoffs against the toronto blue jays lost the first round there the rangers have always 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 lost in the first round of the playoffs except for two years that was 2010 and 2011 and in both of those years guess who they opened up against your tampa bay rays so there is some absolutely horrible math that has it's not that was uh what are we looking at 13 14 years ago um but yeah i mean it, we've got tyler glasnow and zach eflin going for the Rays in the first couple of games that's a pretty strong one two with a tbd for the third the rangers have only uh jordan montgomery looks like he'll be the the starting pitcher for game one nathan Ivaldi. when the rangers were in tampa earlier this year Ivaldi was the only one to emerge with a win um it he looked stronger in his last start after you know working his way back into a starter's workload after his injury he looked stronger in his last start so a pretty good one two uh pitching matchup on both of these the third one for the rangers could be heaney could be dunning we don't know john gray's on the on the il could it be max scherzer coming back from the il who yeah. knows um those are your pitching uh probables uh, I, I did take a, take a look here. The the Rangers and Rays finished number one and two in the American League and runs scored this year. So it should be two offenses that are pretty good. Um, of the teams that made the playoffs, of the American League teams that made the playoffs, the Rangers allowed 716 runs. That is the most of any of the AL playoff teams. The Rays, um, better than everyone except the Twins, only allowed 665 this regular season. So probably edge to the Rays, especially because it's a home series. Um, maybe exercise those 2010, 2011 demons. Um, but it hopefully will be a good run scoring series. Yeah, it, it's sort of a brutal break for both teams that they're in this position in the first place. The Rays, 99 wins, but end up two back and the Orioles don't get that by. And the Rangers, uh, they were in first place until the last game of the season. Uh, lose one nothing in that spoiler game um, against the Mariners. And and there you have it. You're stuck in the wild card, which means it's all that pressure now on your starting pitchers. You need to win two or three. And uh, and yeah, man, you, if you drop that first game, you need to force game three. And that's not an easy thing to do. And you need the bats to break. They do have the bats to do it, though. I think that's the, the thing. You can win yourselves a game that way. Yeah. And it's from a perspective standpoint, like it's the Rays have been good lately. It's probably just easily you could easily just say like it's disappointing that they were only a wild card team nobody expected the Orioles to be as good as they were for the Rangers like it, there was some talk that the hope they, they would hope to contend this year hope to contend for a playoff spot then they jumped out to that early start they were really good led the division by what, six and a half games at some point in I think August um it's weird that it feels like a disappointment for them because really big picture this is success right like they were hoping to contend for a playoff spot they got a playoff spot. They did it. But yeah, after you after you lead the, the division for that long, I think it was 148 out of the first 149 days of the season they were in first place. And uh, yeah, they, they, they managed to make it seem a little disappointing that they did what they said they were going to do. My series of the uh, the wildcard series, the wildcard round, is um, I'm going to go with Marlins-Phillies, the 4-5 matchup. Um, I think it's going to be a better series than the 3-6 against the, uh, the Brewers. 
um, hosting the Diamondbacks. I just don't think the Diamondbacks are deep enough quite yet. I think the Brewers are going to have that uh, a strong edge given their starting staff. I mean, that's the number one staff that you're going to have, uh, you know, I think in the entire playoff field right now, uh, especially given that they're healthy, which is the biggest thing right now. A lot of teams can't say that. So I'm going to go Marlins Phillies. Uh, Marlins did never end up needing that last uh, suspended game. And they were going to maybe not, it was not a 163, but it was going to be a, a Monday game uh, to wrap up the ninth inning against the Mets. Didn't have Just to do that. One inning thing. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the big question here, Luis Arise, um, ankle injury, unclear if he's going to be available. He's sort of he's been sitting out, uh, did get a pinch hit opportunity, but uh, who knows how healthy he is. The The Marlins, we haven't been able to say this in a long time, but they do have the offense to to scare you, to do some damage here. Uh, the additions of, of Josh Bell, Jake Berger at the trade deadline, um, alongside what they've already gotten in average on base uh, from Luis Arise and homers from Jorge Soler, I, I think they actually do have uh, a lineup of top five that's going to scare you if you throw in um, uh, Jazz Chisholm Jr. And so I don't know. I don't know that they're, gonna, they're ever going to get on base enough to like sustain this. But across the two game series, hit a couple bombs, and I think you can really change mm -hmm. some things. And I think they're good enough to to make you um, I, I, to make you sweat in a three game series. And I don't think you know walking into a series against the Braves would I expect them to win more than you know a game or two? No, but. I think in this shortened series uh, against the Phillies, who have plenty of flaws themselves, um, it's going to be interesting. The first game is going to be Jesus Lozardo uh, going up against Zach Wheeler. Second game is going to be Braxton Garrett against Aaron Nola. You historically would absolutely say Phillies edge on both sides. Lozardo, though, fantastic. I mean, he's looking almost ace caliber at this point. 363 ERA in 178 innings. Braxton Garrett's been fantastic, too. 366 in 159 innings. After that, I do not know what they do. Sandy Alcantara is out. Yuri Perez is out. Edward Cabrera has been in the minors for much of the second half and uh, been good in a, in a short stint since returning, but he walks like like sick dudes for nine innings. And Man, uh, how, I don't feel good about that. How many playoff teams right now, and I would need to go look at this, and maybe this ends up going in the windup tomorrow. How many playoff teams right now only have two starters? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, the Braves are down to two. The, the Marlins are down to two. Um, I mean, those the, the Rangers are down to two. The Astros have had starting rotation shortages all year. Like, there's a lot of playoff teams. Like, a, a large chunk of this of this playoff uh, collection has basically two starters, and then I don't know. Let's see what happens yeah. after that. That's wild. I mean, that is just yeah. like limping to the finish. So, if the Marlins have to go to a game three here, or if they're lucky enough to go to game three, either one is it Johnny Cueto with a six ERA? Is it Cabrera? A bullpen game doesn't really look likely. I don't think they have the arms to stretch it out that way. We'll see. We'll see where that goes. The Phillies, you know the Phillies. They are the team they were last year, just better in some respects. Um, they have uh, Nick Castellanos in much better form. They have Bryson Stott, who's had a fantastic season offensively and defensively and stealing 37 bags, I think. Trey Turner has gotten back to form. He ends up with a 26-30 season after having a really just a miserable time until August and everybody clapped and mm. everything got better. Uh, Carl Schwarber, weirdest leadoff hitter ever 47 homers but batting below the mendoza line bryce harper is going to finish uh really close to a 300 400 500 slash line despite uh having a really rough first half so that is uh we're just going to see if those starting pitchers can can lock things down against the marlins team that is much improved in the lineup department and i think you're going to see the phillies you know swinging bombs away They're, they are good enough to of course win win a series with their bats we are obviously objective journalists. We do not actually root for any of these teams. But when was it uh, that we first said that we're a pro fish podcast? I mean, that was like June, right? I think it was June. They were starting to make a run. Arise was looking at 400 and, and someone needed to say it. And we were brave, brave enough to stand up and call ourselves a pro fish podcast. Well, look, so. we got to dance with the ones that, that, that brought us here. So, you know, pro fish, go fish. Let's <laughs> let's see the Marlins in the World Series in 2023. Let's let's make it happen. <laughs> Levi, it's time for us to step into the on-deck arcade. Things are going to change a little bit here in the postseason, but let's wrap up what we had going on in the regular season with our uh, weekly fun games we like to play. The arms race, it was a, it was a runaway. You were leading 14-6 to six heading into the last week of the season. We both pick a starter each weekend, whoever does better in the game score 2.0 uh, department. Uh, they win. And so you had Cole Reagans uh, of the Royals against the Tigers. I had Chris Bassett um, of the Blue Jays against the Yankees. Um, I won't belabor this. 86 to 56 for uh, Chris Bassett had a fantastic start. Seven and, and two thirds innings, um, no runs, 12 Ks. Uh, Cole Reagan, six and third, four runs, uh, four walks, which hurts, and eight Ks. Uh, so a great ending. I, I I ended 
my last three games with 90, 86, 86, where 40 is kind of like your your standard baseline. So I figured so, things out in the end. Padres, only, you are, you're basically the Padres. I figured things out right at the end. I, I really feel good about this heading into next year. Yeah. Uh, Levi, heading over into the much more you know highly anticipated uh, matchup here, the Homer Chase. We pick a guy every week. We add up their total yeah. across the whole season, and we ended the last coming into the last week. 20 to 27, 27 to 27 entering the last week of the year. Uh, you picked Vlad Guerrero Jr. I picked Bobby Witt Jr. A couple of juniors here, and we only got one homer across the two of them. Do you have any clue which which one homered? I think it was I think it was Bobby Witt Jr. because the couple of Blue Jays games that I checked in on, I tried not like I paid attention to the Blue Jays games because they were playoff relevant, but I I wanted this moment. I wanted to not know, and now I'm wishing that I just knew because I think you won. I think I want to. Bobby Witt Jr., seventh inning Friday, yes. homer off of Keenan Middleton. His 30th uh, homer of the year, my 28th homer of the year, importantly. Uh, and so Bobby Witt Jr. is a 30 30 club. And wow. I you're the, take crown. you're the Padres, and I am the Rangers blowing it on the last day. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> there you go. So, Levi, what we're going to do here in the postseason for uh, sort of a modified uh, homer chase for the postseason, uh, each round, we're going to pick two hitters. The only rules, mm. it can't be from the same team. <clears throat> and you, once you pick a hitter, you can't use him again for the rest of the postseason. So mm -hmm. since you you took the L in that, uh, the regular season homer chase, I'm going to let you pick first with your wild card player number one. Man, 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 man. Um, I'm going to go with Adolis Garcia. He, is, he comes up big in big moments and uh, has been hitting the ball very well lately uh, last year day of the of the season notwithstanding they won't be playing in seattle so um and he's playing against his friend randy arosa reina those two two both of those guys seem to come up big in big moments when they're playing against each other so give me a dolis i like that actually a lot i was i was thinking about him and uh now that i know you can't take a team in his i'll, I'll think strategically here my first pick i don't want to waste anybody on three game series but you just got to go with your gut uh, i'm going with jake Berger, and Dang that's it. not a not a name you had in April, uh, but I'm going to go Jake Berger as my number one for the Marlins. You did pick strategically because that was going to be my second pick. Uh, you know what? Give me a Rosarena. Let's just go straight head to head. Adolis and a Rosarena. So any home runs that those guys hit that's, in that series are going to be good news for me. That's a really good pairing. I like that a lot. Um, I'd love to pick a twin. I just don't trust they're going to win a game and, and keep themselves in it. Uh, so I will go with, um, I don't want to waste forever. I can't do it. I'm going to go with uh, Corey Seager. Let's do it. Okay. All right. I'll, 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 I'll waste him on a, on a three game series. It's okay. Alrighty, that is going to do it for us. Time for us to hit the exits. Thank you for listening. Uh, you can enjoy a whole lot of what, what's here on the Athletic Baseball Show over the course of October, uh, whether that's us or Starkville or a whole lot of people in between. Um, a lot to come. Stay locked into the feed. Thanks to Tim McMaster for producing today's show. You can find our work all week long at theathletic.com. Subscribe to The Athletic for $2 per month for the first year at theathletic.com slash baseball show. Sign up for The Windup, The Athletic's daily baseball newsletter with Levi and Ken Rosenthal for absolutely free. Coming up next in your feed, like I said, Starkville. You're going to want to hear it. Give us a follow on Twitter. Levi is at 3-2-EFIS. I'm at Stephen J. Nesbitt. We'll be back on Friday with our Division Series preview and more of What's on Deck. Later, dudes.